الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وشفيع المذنبين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وحبيب إله العالمين الرسول الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين صلى الله عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا ابن رسول الله ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز فوزا عظيما It is night of Ashura and Imam Hussein Salamullah had in his sermon that he said inni ma ra'aytu ashaban afdal min ashabi wa la ahli bayt abar min ahli bayti I have not seen a companions better than my companions who are the supporters supported Imam Hussein in Karbala and no household or family relations they are more sincere and honest and observe relations with their relation or head of the family like my Ahlul Bayt those of Bani Hashim who were in Karbala Well, that was the state of Ashab of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al Hussein salamullah alayhi, he has chosen certain people. Of course, his announcement was for people in general. But particularly, he has chosen some of the Ashab, and he knew that they are very honest, very sincere, and they will stand with him without leaving him whatever the situation will be. Some people sometimes argue that Ashab of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Badr are not better than Ashab of Imam Hussein in Karbala because they also was supporting the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that was the first war between Muslims and non-Muslims there and they fought with the Prophet till the end and some of them were martyred so Shuhada Badr are not better than Shuhada of Karbala well the answer first of all Imam Hussein he said I did not see any Ashab better maybe equal that is something else he did not say these are better than anyone else so maybe those who were martyred with the prophet are equal to shuhada karbala because the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said husaynun minni wa ana man husayn husayn is from me and I am from Hussein, so the message of the Prophet and the message of Imam Hussein is the same. So those who were supporting the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and ultimately was martyred or were martyred, they have equal height and equal degree like those who were with Imam Hussein alayhi salam who were martyred. The word of Imam Hussein, I have not seen better, he means they are not better, 
may be equal or less, that is something else. But the word itself shows they might be equal, fine. The second point, many of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was with him in Badr, they did not fought sincerely and did not stand permanently when the situation was that they have to be killed in Badr because Imam Ali السلام, was there and Hamza was there and some of the brave mu'mineen were there so they attacked the mushrikeen Imam Ali killed the most brave people of mushrikeen in Badr and he alone killed 35 people out of 70 who were killed. So half of them were killed by hand of Imam Ali. The other half, Imam Ali shared the Muslims to kill the rest. So the test was not very clear that if the mushrikeen are superior, will all the Muslims stand, will not run away or not? See, that is the biggest test. We see in Uhud, Ashab of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the beginning there was a victory and that victory again was because of a bravery of Imam Ali Alayhi Salam who killed at the beginning 10 of many Abduddar, Ashab al Alwiya, those who are brave and the banners are with them. He killed them one by one and then Mushrikeen ran away then while the Muslims were busy to collect whatever left, then Khalid ibn al-Walid turned from the back of the mountain, mountain of Uhud, and then he attacked the Muslims from the backside. They were not expecting that. So we see the Muslims run away all. The only one who remained with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Imam Ali. Well, some said another one who was also stayed, okay, maximum one or two remained with the Prophet and the rest have run away. So you see, when the real test is there, you don't see sometimes the people will stand. Well, when there is victory and success, well, all the people are supporting. But if they found that it is a difficult task, they might be killed, they have not defended the Prophet himself. They left the Prophet and run away. So those Ashab are not as sincere and as honest and as good as Ashab of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Karbala. Ashab knew from the night of Ashura, Imam Hussein told them that tomorrow whoever is with me all will be killed. And he gave them permission, not that, that they did not know. They knew that tomorrow if they stay with Imam Hussein will be killed. And if they go at night, there is nothing haram for them because Imam Hussein gave them permission. Still, they refused to leave Imam Hussein alone and they said, we will stay till the end and we won't allow the enemy to come near you unless we are all martyred. And then in the day of Ashura, exactly that was what happened. None of them, not a single one of Ashab of Imam Hussein alayhi salam ran away or was afraid to fight until he was martyred. Not only in Uhud, in so many wars of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam against the infidels and non-believers like the one in Khandaq, for example, he sent the first one with an army and said, go and fight. They were afraid to fight and return back. Second day, he sent the second caliph and told him, go. Then the history said, yujabbinu ashabahu wa yujabbinuna. He make them coward and they make him coward. And instead of, he tell them that you have to resist and fight and they, tell, they should support him. He said, yes, we'll fight with you. No, each one of them uh, try to let the other feel fear that we cannot fight and then they return back. Till the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
سيد لو أعطينا الراية ردا رجلا يحب الله يحبه الله ورسوله ويحب الله ورسوله كرار غير فرار tomorrow I will give the manner in hand of a person who is liked by Allah and he's a prophet and he likes Allah and the prophet and he's karrar he attacks the enemy will not run away غير فرار the rest they run away from the war but he will not run away and that was victory of uh, Muslims by support of Imam Ali alayhi salam in Ghazwatul uh, Khaybar. Well, even till end of life of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and the last battle was Hunayn, well, after Mecca was opened and all people of Mecca, apparently they said we are a Muslim. Okay, some of them were Munafiqeen, fine. But the people of Mecca all declared they are Muslim. And then Hawazin, which is about 800 kilometers away from Mecca, in Taif, that is about 80 kilometers away from Mecca, there are mountains there. They gathered a huge army and they wanted to attack the Prophet. The Prophet moved with 12,000 soldiers. That was the biggest army at that time. And he went to fight with Hawazin. Well, now the people, when they saw 12,000 soldiers at that time, they said, nobody will conquer us because our number is small. They were proud of themselves. But then the Mushrikeen idol worshippers, they were in top of the mountain when the Muslims crossed the valley. They throw stone from top of the mountain and all that army, 12,000 people, ran away. The only people who remained with the Prophet were 10. Nine of them were from Bani Hashim, who are relatives of the Prophet. And one of them was Ayman ibn Ummi Ayman. He was also related to the Prophet, uh, very near to the Prophet. I mean, not related in blood, but very near to the Prophet. So the rest of the Muslims ran away. So now those Ashab who run away always, can we compare them with Ashab of Imam Hussein in Karbala? Naturally, we cannot compare them with that. Even one of the ladies from Medina, she talked to the Prophet, said, Ya Rasulullah, what bad people are those who leave you whenever there is difficulty and problem? If you go back, then you kill them. They do not deserve to be honored. You know. Okay, the Prophet hear that, but when they return back later on, and when after resistance of those 10 people, the main one was Imam Ali, السلام, because he was at the front and was preventing the big army to come and attack the Prophet. The nine were around the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam, and Imam Ali was in the front. The history mentioned that Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib was with the Prophet at that day. He did not leave the Prophet, and he asked his son that, Ali? Where is Ali? I don't see Ali. It is impossible that Ali also ran away. But where is he? I don't see him. He said that, look to the front. إنه هناك يرد الكتائب. He is in the front, uh, try to stop the people to be near the Prophet. Maybe if they are near by arrow, they may kill the Prophet. So he went to the front alone, fighting with the 12,000 people. So that was the victory by hand of Imam Amir al salam and Bani Hashim in almost all the wars which were there. So the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, called Ansar, are really superior to any other companions in that situation. And you see in night of Ashura, they knew tomorrow are going to be killed because after giving them permission by Imam Hussein uh, to leave, and they said, no, we'll never leave. He said, okay, now look to your gardens in paradise so they looked 
to their gardens in paradise and they knew that they are going to be martyred next day. And they remained at that night. Sometime they are uh, talking and smiling and joking with each other. Some of them said it is not a night of joke, you know, tomorrow. Others said, why not? It is only a few hours we'll fight and then we'll go to paradise. So why not to joke? We are happy. What better life will be there? What better happiness we will get that within a few hours we attack the non-believers and if we are martyred, then we'll go to paradise. So that faith was not an ordinary faith. And we see the in the day of Ashura, and elderly people like Habib ibn Mudahir, like Borer, and similar people who were at the age of 75, 80, well, 85, you know, their ages, still they fought very bravely without fear from the enemies of Allah. So that was the title given to them by Imam Hussein that they are, as I see, I don't see any supporters, any companions better than my companion. It's actually a medal for them. Actually, if we try to read the history, unfortunately, most of the people are shaky when it is very tough. When imtihan of Allah, when the test of Allah is there, the people are easily broken. They will not resist till the end. You see, after the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for 23 years, those who listened to his advice and stayed beside Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, in hadith said there were three or four, and some said maximum seven. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam tried to get 40 people, real sincere people, to support him so that he will stand for his right of caliphate, but there were no 40 people. So where are those thousands of people? Some of them are careless. Some of them are not aware of the real problem, their tragedy. Some of them are afraid. Some of them are selfish. Well, different reasons are for people. But what I mean, the value is for those who are really sincere, not for those who are insincere and are shaky. When we pray that Allah may keep us ma'al shuhada'i wa salihin wa hasuna ula'ika rafiqa, may Allah resurrect us in the day of judgment with the martyrs and with the good people, and they are the best companions in paradise. Actually, not everybody can be called really he is that good companion because most of the people will not stand. Well, that four or seven at time of Saqifah increased in number till time of Imam Hussein. Saqifah was at year of 10 or 11th of Hijrah. And then the Ashura date was at the year 60. In that 50 years time, number of sincere people increased to 72 companions. And we know from a hadith number of supporters of Imam al-Mahdi Ajallahu Ta'ala Faraja will be 313. So you see the numbers of those who really stand for the truth and they are very well aware, will not be shaky, will not be affected by propaganda, will not be affected by the enemies, will not be affected by Satan to mislead them what is they is called Ahlul Basair, the word is used. Basira is the awareness, awareness of the conscious of the person. Not basar, not the eye view. Some people have eye, but they have a blind heart. So they are not Ahlul Basair. They do not see by heart, only see by material eye. But Ashab of Imam Hussein say, Ahlul Basair. They were 
very well aware of their duty and insisting to be supporting Imam Hussein, and even if that will cause them to be martyred. When they attacked people of Kufa, their number was small, but actually the army of Ibn Sa'd was a big problem. And Ibn Sa'd told his army that you should not fight as usual with honor that one to one. If one to one will go to them, they will kill you all. So all the army, 30,000 should attack one person who is standing there in the war front. So you see, their bravery, they are not afraid. In the first attack, well, it is mentioned out of 72, about 50 people were martyred. Then Imam Hussein told the rest, do not attack all of you. You go one to one. And when they came one to one, nobody could stand in front of them. So Ibn Sa'd find that all his brave people were killed one by one, so he attacked, he said all the army should attack them and he should not accept that. So you see they are so brave, so honest, so sincere, so aware of the truth that they say we will never surrender and we will never leave our Imam alone. That is the biggest test for them. And maybe till today we have the same test. I mean, we are mentioning the story of Karbala because it will, it is related to our situation today, nowadays. Nowadays we know our ulama, our maraja are on the right side and how much we stand with them, how much we listen to them, how much we obey them, how much if they give an order, the people will follow that order. Unfortunately, the experience showed that if there is benefit, personal benefit, the people will support. If there is no personal benefit, the people are careless. So you see, that is why we say Imam al-Mahdi is waiting for 313 very honest and sincere persons in order to be maybe the leaders of his army. And then the rest, naturally thousands will be the supporters, but at least the readers, those who carry the banners should be there. And then the rest people, rest of the people will be around them. On the day of Ashura, after that the companions fought bravely and all were martyred, then the turn came to Bani Hashim and Bani Hashim one by one started with Ali Akbar till Abu al-Fadl Abbas salamullah alayhi all were martyred and Imam Hussein alayhi salam remained alone. Then Imam Hussein came to farewell with the family, with the, his sister Zainab, with his wife and the rest and tell them that I am going to fight the people. Then the mother of Ali al-Azhar it was at age of six months. She brought her son and told Zainab Salamullah alayha that O oh, Bani Hashim took your son because he is dying of thirst. I have no milk to feed him because I am thirsty as well. And then he is so thirsty that I fear he will die in my hand and I will be responsible. Now you are the one who is responsible of the son and do something for him. Zainab Salamullah alayha told Imam Hussein that this is the situation, what to do. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, okay, I will take him and I will ask the army of the enemy, maybe they will feel mercy for that infant to give him water. The Narrators of the history, they said, we saw Imam Hussein coming from the tent on the horse and covering something with his address so that the sunlight should not affect that. We didn't know what he was covering until when he came near the army of the enemy, 
he brought us his son and he told them, oh, people of Kufa, in kana dhanbun lil kibar fama dhanbu sirar. If you think the elderly are to be punished for whatever wrong reasons you have, but what this child, what this newborn baby has done, he has not done any sin and did not harm any one of you. Look to him. He is dying from thirst. He is bringing his tongue out just to get maybe some water, humidity, or anything. But then his situation is very alarming. Now the army were divided into two. Some of them said, well, okay, if the elderly are to be punished, then there is no sin for the children. And some of them were more cruel. They said, no, we have to kill all Ali Muhammad, all Bani Hashim, all the descendants of the Prophet and relative of the Prophet. They call themselves Muslim, but you see what type of Islam is that. We have to kill them all, and they should be deprived of water, even if they die. And because some differences happened in the army, Umar ibn Sa'ad told Harmala that اقطع نزاعل القوم cut the confusion which happened between the people. He said, what should I do? Should I put arrow to the father or to the son? Umar ibn Sa'ad said, look to the neck of the son to Abdullah al radiyah and kill him so that he is killed, you know. Harmala later on when Mukhtar caught him after four or five years, he used to relate the story. They asked him, what was your role? He said, my role was to kill the people by arrow and they promised me thousand dinar for each arrow if I kill one of the companions or relatives of Imam Hussein. And I had three main arrows which were very effective and I missed four of others, you know. One of the arrows was in the eye of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, salamullahi alayhi, when after that he could not stand on the horse and he fell down. And one was in the heart of Imam Hussein, which is mentioned in history that at the last moment when Imam Hussein had too much blood, he removed his dress to wipe the blood, and then arrow came attacking his heart that he could not tolerate, and he tried to bring the arrow out, and that was not possible, so he pushed the arrow to come out from the backside. And he said the third arrow was for Abdullah al -Radiyah. And he said, I have not felt sympathy in my life to anybody except to this child. That when I throw him by arrow, the child was expecting water. Suddenly his mouth was full of blood and he could not do anything. He took his hand and he hugged his father, Imam Hussein. And Imam Hussein saw him full of blood without water. Imam Hussein put his hand and filled it with the blood and threw it to heaven. That Imam al Baqir says, if a drop of blood of that would have fallen on the ground, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have punished all that army. But it, it was will of Allah to test them rather than to punish them in dunya. Their punishment is in akharat. Then Imam Hussein found the matter has finished by martyring Abdullah al -Radiy and he brought him to the tent and gave him to Zainab salamullahi alayha and later on buried him on that ground. But still the cruel enemy, it is mentioned, when they decapitated the martyred people, one of the tribe remained without any head to keep it on the spear. They got the head and put it on a high spear to be proud that they are carrying heads of Ahlul Bayt, salamullahi alayhim. And then somebody guided them. They said, there is an infant here. 
who was killed and was buried by Imam Hussein, go and decapitate him. So they came and took the baby from the underground and then cut his head and put it on a spear. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon wa sayya'lamu alladhina zalamu ayya man qalabin yanqalibun wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. Allahumma inna nas'alaku wa nad'uuk بحق محمد وأهل بيته الطاهرين وبحق الحسين الوجيه وجده وأبيه وأمه وأخيه والتسعة المعصومين من بنيه وبحق عبد الله الرضيع باب الحوائج أن تقضي حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم عجل فرج وليك صاحب العصر والزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه ومن المجاهدين بين يديه اللهم اقضي بهم حوائجنا اللهم اشفي بهم مرضانا اللهم وسع بهم أرزاقنا اللهم احفظ لنا أولادنا وبناتنا واجعلهم من أنصار الإمام المهدي سلام الله عليه اللهم احفظ علماءنا الأعلام ومراجعنا العظام خصوصا آية الله العظمى سيد السيستاني دام ظله اللهم احرسهم بحراستك وادفع عنهم شر الأشرار وكيد الفجار وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات رحم الله من يقرأ الفاتحة قبلها صلوات